Vivian, um, we can move on to the uh, next session, which is going to deal with um, risk and regulation and how evidence plays into that process. <coughs> and we're kicking off with uh, Dr. Fogger Scheidt, who's going to uh, talk about Chinese herbal medicine treatment of menopausal syndrome, fictitious facts, factual fictions about diseases, drugs and treatments. Okay. Thanks, Fogger. Thanks a lot. I cha change the talk a little bit, make it a bit shorter. <laughs> So I changed it to potent substances for menopause and it didn't fit in here from Chinese medicine, uh, facts of fetish. Um, the, f first of all, I should say a little bit about my own background, uh, two, two different facts about my background. First of all, I, as you can hear from my accent, I'm German. Um, I'm married to an Italian, I live in England, I do Chinese medicine, I studied science in school, uh, I'm also an anthropologist, uh, so I do believe that one can be a lot of different things, and one can com un unlike what, uh, the, the last speaker, I believe one can communicate across boundaries, yes? I, I, I believe that uh, I experience in daily life, German cooking is not like Italian cooking or English cooking, etc., etc. But there's something, there, there's a possibility of communication and what interests me personally is how we can think about this communication and what can think about translation and movement of stuff across boundaries, across time, and that's what really interests me. And that has got a little bit to do also with my, uh, where, where I am in my academic work. Um, I, I'm an anthropologist, but also a historian, or, um, and I've, I've done some work in what would be called science studies, uh, studies of social studies of science, uh, technology, and medicine. And that's really the, the perspective that I'm coming from. Um, and I, when, I, when I looked at the, uh, the name of the talk, uh, the name of the, the conference, Potent Substances, I looked up uh, substances in the uh, Oxford English Dictionary. And uh, the thing that strikes me about the definition of substance here is substance is something that is presumed to be somehow the essence of a thing. The quality and the essence of a thing that, <coughs> that bestows it an effect. And, um, as I said, I'm an anthropologist, and what I really like about anthropology is that um, um, it, it, it forces us to engage with things that are very different from the way that we uh, often see things, and uh, engage with them in a way that we first of all have to take the other, as the anthropologists call it, uh, serious, and then see what happens. Yeah? So, uh, what's the difference, or what's the opposite, or, or, or something that that is opposite of substance. The opposite of substance is, if I could say, it's a fetish. Because fetish, you know, substance, we believe the potency comes from what, what is within the thing. A fetish is, as you know, is our projection onto the thing imputing to it a certain kind of potency. So what I want to talk about this, um, and, and those of you who are a little bit familiar with science studies, does anybody here know the name Bruno Latour? Yeah. Yeah? One, two, Two only, three, four, five, yeah? You, you know fetish and facts, as we come to the end, for Bruno Latour are quite important and that's where I want to move, yeah? Uh, so it's not my own. So we could say about, and, and what I want, the, the topic of the talk is uh, Chinese herbal medicines for menopause. Uh, or, or, um, th that's what I want to look at. Um, and if we, um, if, 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 if Chinese medicines obviously come from China, they come from a different place, different time, uh, and they're supposed to be used here in, in, in our healthcare system, maybe, maybe not, for uh, a problem that's called menopause. And one of the ways, uh, thinking of these, these treatments as substances, um, is to discover what's actually, wh where the potency comes, wh where the potency lies. And uh, evidence-based medicine, as, as one example, that would be an attempt uh, to discover within those treatments that are offered, the substance, yes, that makes those particular treatments potent for, um, for, for a condition called menopause, yes, okay. In a certain way, stripping away from it everything that is fetishized about it and anything that might be projected on them uh, by beliefs or whatever. But uh, this is, I uh, just want to give you an example of, of why that might be not so easy. Um, this is a, a, a quote from a uh, uh, late Ming dynasty doctor about uh, where the potency of Chinese medicine lies. And he says medicine is E, to use medicines, medicinals is not as good as using E, 
Uh, and only when one develops one's E, then one can employ, deploy medicinals uh, to always achieve an effect. So obviously this doctor, and this is just one example I'm, I'm putting here, he obviously locates the potency of the medicine not in the substance but somewhere else. I want to just, I could talk at length about what he means by it, but I want to just give you a, a, a little case. Uh, there's a famous story about um, a doctor who goes to a remote mo uh, mountain area uh, on holiday. And he, um, uh, in this remote mountain area, he, um, he, he meets a party of people. And one of, the, one of this party is a young woman who uh, is pregnant. Uh, her waters have broken and she's about to have a child, but it's not working. And, and the party is in total distress. What shall they do? You know, because this woman might, you know, something, she might die or the child might die. And they say, we are, we are miles and miles away from a, from, a, from a big city. You know, we can't find any remedies. What shall we do? And the doctor says, it's a famous doctor, so he says, hmm, it's very easy. Uh, it's autumn, the leaves are falling. Just take the leaves that are falling and make a tea out of it, because the falling leaf, this is kind of like the energy of autumn, the chi of autumn that's descending, that's moving downward. So you just take that chi and you take it and make a tea out of it, and obviously the woman took it, you know, and she delivered. So clearly the potency is not in the substance, the potency is in a particular relationship of the substance to a place of time, etc., etc., and knowing that would be here what is called as E. So, if we take this doctor, for instance, he might say to locate the efficacy or the potency just in a substance that's rather a fetishization of a substance, yes, okay? So it's quite a different way of looking at it. Um, but let's assume that um, there are powerful substances. Um, and I start with uh, what, in, in a way, what we talked about before, simples, yeah? Uh, danya. This is kind of like where you only use one particular herb, uh, not, in, not, not, the, not the constituent, but a herb to achieve a particular effect. And I looked at the, on the net, uh, potent substances for menopause. Uh, this is from the first website that came in my mind, interestingly called SCUM. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the meaning of that is. Uh, not with an A. <laughs> Perhaps, but he says here there are two powerful and, and important herbs in Chinese medicine for menopause. And he says one is Angelica sinensis or Dangwei, and the other one is uh, ginseng, and they are really important to, for the treatment of hot flushes. Uh, now, of course, anybody who does Chinese medicine as a Chinese medicine doctor trained in modern China today, it's very unlikely that they would use Angelica or ginseng on their own for treating menopausal hot flushes, yes? But nevertheless, um, and, uh, be because, it's, uh, as we also heard before, it's very un un unusual in China to use just one, one substance. Usually in Chinese medicine you use a combination of substances in a, in a formula, yeah? Okay, so this is from a popular website and usually if you, if you do a little bit of research you find even so that it's kind of like popularized knowledge, um, this kind of knowledge doesn't come very often just out of the popular domain. It's usually tied to some kind of science. And um, I just want to give you a little bit. So this is Dangwei, Angelica sinensis. Uh, it's a very important herb in Chinese medicine, in Chinese gynecology. But this is from a, from a paper, uh, 1997. Uh, in the Chinese, so it, it basically says that so this is an academic paper, yes? <coughs> so it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a, actually a systematic review. Uh, this is from, no, it's a, from a clinical study on Angelica sinensis. And basically it says here, in, the, in giving the reason for why one should examine uh, this herb, basically it says it's indicated for problems of menstruation, including menopausal symptoms. Yeah? And then I will talk about this a little bit later. It actually links, uh, makes a certain link to a, a, a Chinese medical problem. But what I want to say here is it says it's indicated for menopausal symptoms. As I said before, uh, and I want, uh, actually in Chinese medicine you don't use simple herbs. Yeah? Okay? So a claim is made here. It's, there's a certain linkage constructed to Chinese medicine that is actually not, not factual. Um, if it's not factual, then it needs to be a projection of the authors onto Chinese medicine, trying to find in Chinese medicine a simple herb that uh, fulfills their expectations of how uh, medicine might be practiced, yes? 